What's your I met a celebrity but didn't let on that I knew who they were story. Worked at a hotel and Russell Crowe came in the lobby. He went to the house phones and called front desk. Where I was working. I could see him pretty easily. I answered the phone and he asked to be connected to a room so I put him through. This wasn't long after he threw a phone at a hotel clerk so I didn't want to take a chance at pissing him off. My dad and I bumped into Michael Jordan at a Walgreens near Chicago. This was back in 2006 or so. We were picking out birthday cards for my mom. And MJ and his son came in the same aisle browsing some cards. My dad kept his cool and continued to look through different cards. Giving him his personal space. Capital I. On the other hand. Was 9 years old and in awe. Sort of staring at him. After MJ picked out his card. He winked at me and gave me a walk by fist bump. Didn't really set in until I was older how cool that was. I was in a bookstore in RI and was in the horror section. Picked up a book by Stephen King. And flipped it over and saw his picture on the back. Or inside the cover. I don't really remember. I look up. And in the next aisle over. Right across the bookshelf from me. Is a guy that looks exactly like Stephen King. So I hold up the book and say is this you? Yeah. Good books. Thanks. And that was that. I worked at a Barnes and Noble in NY as a clerk. But once or twice I'd be called over to the in-store Starbucks cafe to help out whenever they were understaffed. One time, Alan Rickman came up and ordered something. I can't recall what. I wrote hand scrubber on his cup though. He smiled at me when he noticed it. I used to be a server at a Mexican restaurant right outside LA in the late 90s. One day Leonardo DiCaprio came in with who I assume was his mom to have lunch. This would have been post Titanic so really at the peak of his breakthrough mega celeb status. He was wearing a ball cap, sunglasses and unshaven but I recognized him anyway. I didn't let anyone know and I wrote something like your movies are awesome. I hope you liked our food on his receipt when I dropped it off at the table. After he left. I swung by and picked up his payment and he had left me a note back that said thank you so much for not blowing my cover with a $100 tip. It was awesome I was only like 19. I went and got some PlayStation games with it after my shift ended. I helped Steven Spielberg move his daughter's bags into her college dorm. I was working a shift helping first years move in and I see a guy in a hat and sunglasses who is unmistakably Spielberg. I strike up a conversation. Ask if he needs help with the bags. ETC. First names only. We're from CA. My wife. Kate. And I sent all our kids to East Coast schools though. Stuff like that. Later, when his daughter opened the door for the first time, he whipped out a camcorder and, wearing the biggest dad grin, recorded the whole thing before turning the camera on my friend and me to ask us about the city. So, I have a supporting. The luggage. Speaking role in a limited release, home movie, film shot by Steven Spielberg. My husband was vacationing in Arizona, killing time in a bar over a burger and a beer. A guy sits next to him and my husband has a nice chat with him. The guy leaves and my husband goes to close his tab and the bartender tells him it's been covered by the guy he was talking to. The bartender asks if he knows who he was talking to. My husband has no idea. Chuck Norris. It was his bar. It. How embarrassing. It wasn't Arizona. It is Woody's Wharf in Newport. California and still exists today. The story is still true. I just flaked on the location. Thanks for all the fun comments. In the mid 90s I was a cab driver. Our service was like a cross between a limo and a taxi. And we serviced some fancy resorts. As I dropped off my passenger at a resort. Another guy asks if I'm a taxi, and I say yes. So he tells his friend their cab is here. His friend got in the car and said this ain't no cab. Smells too good to be a cab in that unmistakable Chris Rock voice. He and his friend just bulleted with each other for the 15 minute drive to a local nightclub. There was a white kid trying to talk to a yellow cab driver ahead of us in the parking lot and Chris Rock started imitating the kid. Like I need a ride. Yeah. I'm drunk. But I need a ride. And I was trying really hard not to laugh out loud. He wasn't nearly as famous yet at the time. But I had seen his stand-up routines on Comedy Central and knew exactly who he was. But didn't go fanboy on him. 10 stroke 10 would drive Chris Rock again. Samuel L. 
Jackson was on my flight. I was second to last aboard the flight and there was all this commotion with the flight attendants and gate crew. Once I approached the door of the plane I realized they were all looking at Samuel L. Jackson. He was standing by the cockpit making himself available to passengers fans. I played it cool. Didn't say a word. Turns out. I'm shy around celebrities. I'm just glad I didn't make a snakes on the plane joke. Was walking out of a gas station over on Crescent Heights and Sunset and heard a hey, hey. Coming from a cracked window on tinted out Range Rover that was parked at one of the pumps. I walk over to the car to see Jeff Goldblum. Who had somehow seen my gold ring I was wearing on my right hand from 20 feet away. He proceeds to tell me how he loves my ring and has been looking for one just like it and asks me where I got it. I tell him it was my grandfather's and he asks to see it up close. I hold my hand up to Jeff Goldblum. He takes my hand. Gushes about the ring for a minute and thanks me. I said sure and walked back to my apartment. I like to think we're friends now. Edit. Since people are asking. The ring in question. Before I realized who he was. Sean Alexander asked me if I liked football. I told him I liked the Steelers. He said. Yeah. I lost to them in the Super Bowl. I felt pretty stupid. But he thought it was funny. Super nice guy. About 40 years ago my father was sitting next to Telly Savalas at some Vegas blackjack table. For about an hour they talked and bet some large amounts of money and my father never let on that he knew the guy was famous. Telly finally says. It's pretty cool that you haven't asked for my autograph. My father responds. Well. You didn't ask for mine. Telly laughs and writes on a cocktail napkin. Hey Jeff. Can I have your autograph? He carried that damn napkin with him for years. Conan O'Brien. My college friend's dad owned an Irish restaurant in Manhattan and she waitressed there back in the 1990s. She said he was super rude to the staff and was a bad tipper. One day a bunch of us were walking in the city and we saw him at a sidewalk cafe. We stopped and stared and he noticed we were talking about him. My other friend went up to his table and asked him to take a picture of us and handed him her camera. His friends at the table had a huge laugh at his expense as we posed for a picture without him in it. We never let on we knew who he was. Now we all hold dear and off sent a photo of us with a funny backstory. Was at a convenience store in LA when me and a very nicely dressed black gentleman walked up to the cashier at the same time to pay. It was night time and he had his dark shades on and was talking on his phone. I gave him the after you gesture and he nodded and said thanks buddy. Paid and left. It wasn't until he was out of the store that I realized he was Jamie Foxx. Not sure if this counts but when I was 15 I was really into playing Starcraft. Being a 3 month old game at a time. On Battle.net. I did mostly 3v3 games. After finishing this one particularly epic match. Close game. We won. We all got into a chat room to talk about how fun that was. I like. One of them says something to the effect of not sure if you all care but you just beat Ben Affleck. Of course we all ask him to prove it. So he told us to wait a minute and visit his official website's message board, benaffleck.com or something like that. He had just made a post in red, red being Ben Affleck himself, about just losing a game of Starcraft. We briefly chatted with him and that was it. Not sure if this counts as a celebrity, but last fall I was flying from LA to Dallas and the person sitting next to me was a real housewife from Bravo. I didn't recognize her since I don't watch her show. But she did mention it to me multiple times during the flight. She wanted to apologize in advance in case there were fans hounding her at the baggage claim. Spoiler alert, there weren't. Hours later when I was checking into my hotel. She was there in the lobby and made sure to tell me again that she was on TV. I met Justin Timberlake and had no idea it was him until someone told me afterwards. Went to a basketball game with my dad and we stopped by the bar area in the arena first. The game had just started so it was pretty empty except for the bar itself. My dad goes to the restroom and I walk up to the bar to order a beer. There's only one seat at the bar next to a guy in a baseball cap and sunglasses. I politely ask if the seat is taken and he just says nope. It's all you. Man. We shoot the it for a couple minutes. He's sitting on my right and eventually he says he and his wife are going to go to their seats. He extends his hand and asks my name. I tell him and ask his name. He says. Justin. 
Nice to meet you dude. Have a good night. He and his wife leave and the bartender comes up to me and says. You know that was Justin Timberlake, right? I immediately did a double take and couldn't believe I didn't recognize him even with the hat and sunglasses. I told my girlfriend at the time who was a huge Justin Timberlake fan and she couldn't believe I met him without knowing it was him. She wouldn't let it go for like a month. Edit. To answer some questions. This was a Memphis Grizzlies game and no the bartender wasn't messing with me because during one of the timeouts. They showed him on camera and had him come onto the court to wave at fans and hype the crowd up etc. I don't think he expected them to do that and didn't like it because he left at half time. Probably just wanted to go to a game without being hounded by fans or something. Edit 2. I never got a good look at Jessica Biel. She was wearing sunglasses as well but she didn't say anything at all during our conversation and since I didn't even realize I was talking to Justin Timberlake. I wasn't about to gawk at this random beautiful woman while talking to her husband. P. Edit 3. I'm aware JT is a part owner of the Grizzlies. I'm not sure if I'm right about why he left at halftime in my first edit above. That's just a complete guess given that one. He left. 2. I'm assuming he didn't want to be recognized with the hat and sunglasses and 3. He obviously goes to plenty of Grizzlies games and usually he isn't trying to hide his face. Assuming that's what he was trying to do this time around. But who knows. He could have left the game early for any number of reasons. I was sitting at the Genius Bar at an Apple store one day and a very large man with dreads came and sat next to me. He was bringing his phone in to get fixed because he dropped it and didn't have a case. I overheard an employee jokingly say, you wear a helmet when you play football. Shouldn't your phone have the same protection? I knew it was Larry Fitzgerald. But I didn't want to be a fanboy so I started asking very broad questions about what he did as a profession to stay engaged in a conversation with him. Larry Fitz is, to this day, one of the nicest, most humble people I have ever met. This happened yesterday. My wife took my son to the zoo, and he wanted to read every little plaque in the reptile area. My wife was distracted for a moment, so he asked the nearest stranger to read the plaque for him. My wife turned around to see Scarlett Johansson happily reading the info to him. Robin Williams used to walk around my lone childhood country town near SF. I saw him once, after hearing many rumors about his sightings. Not entirely unlike Bigfoot or Nessie sightings. My brain didn't fully comprehend what it was seeing. But I could tell he was trying his very best to remain incognito and not draw any unwanted attention. We locked eyes. He smiled. I smiled and nodded back. And we both went our separate ways. My mom is a big sports fan. One time she was shopping at and saw a really large, fit looking man who she didn't immediately recognize but seemed familiar. She thought it must have been a professional football player or something. So she went up to the only other person in the shop, who was this smaller weird looking guy, and asked him if he knew who the athletic looking man was. The short guy looked at my mom and said that's my bodyguard. I'm Elton John. Stood in front of Miranda Cosgrove in line for Space Mountain at Disneyland. Weirdest part of it was we were in the same car on the ride and nobody screamed or did anything during the ride. It was completely silent. Me and my sister just looked at each other like WTF is going on. Edit. People are asking for the picture at the end. I finally found it. She's in the front row on the right. I, almost literally, ran into Shaq at a small restaurant in LA. He was standing in the doorway. You know how some people are so tall you don't see them? So I'm exiting the doorway. And say excuse me man and he stepped aside so I could leave. He is one large human being. I was 10 years old in 2002 when my mom took me to the Bronx Zoo for the first time. It was a rainy day so we practically had the whole place to ourselves except for three British kids running around. Chaperoned by a woman. My mom quickly befriended the woman while I made like a kid and joined the horde. Looking at spiders and scorpions and sharing in the awe and excitement of the animals. After about an hour when we said our goodbyes. My mother told me that the kid, Daniel, who I had been hanging out with had played Harry Potter in the movie that came out last year. I had thought he looked familiar. I didn't meet him but a friend did. In our town Brendan Fraser was shooting a film. He went out to a local beach to, I assume, 
take some pictures abd just generally relax well out of the blue my friend his brother and in another guy rolled up in their itty beat up nissan micra they got to talking and somehow convinced him to hop into the car handed him a can of beer and went to thing best part was they didn't know his actual name so they just kept calling him george of the jungle edit this is to thing when I was younger with fewer responsibilities I used to just drive around for the hell of it. To me, driving is a hobby. Late at night was my favorite time. The streets are empty. My uncle is like this too. I asked him if he wanted to meet at American Coney Island. We sat down in a booth. A couple guys walked in after us and sat down behind us. Eminem. DR. Dread. And a guy I later found out was Jimmy Iovine. We paid them no attention. But we knew who they were. They finished before us and as they were walking out, Eminem nodded at us and said, Thanks for not making a big deal about this. We got you. And the other guys disappeared around the corner. My dad met Robin Williams in an elevator. He got in and they rode a few floors in silence. They stopped on a floor and s bunch of fans ran in and started getting pics with Robin. My dad said he was gracious and took pics with everyone. The doors closed and they rode a few more floors and my dad turned and said does it ever get old? And Robin smiled and said nope. Never. Then my dad got off on his floor and they nodded to one another and my dad went on with his day. Met Elon Musk in a Tesla store in LA. Really wanted to meet him but didn't want to be that guy. Decided I had a plan. So walked up to him and said. Excuse me. Do you work here? He replied. I mean yeah kind of. I say. Ah what can you tell me about the entertainment console of the Model S? He says. Let me see if I can find someone to help you. To which I say. Nah I'm just ducking with you. He laughed and shook my hand and walked off. Jared Leto. I work in an outdoor goods store in Boulder CO. Which for those who don't know is one of the biggest climbing towns in the US. He came into the store to get some stuff as he's known to travel here and climb with other big pros. Notably Alex Honnold who is a buddy of his. He had been outed in the middle of the footwear department by a co-worker online in front of a big group of customers so by the time he got over to the climbing area where I work he was really on edge and unfriendly. I walked up to him and honesty just acted like he wasn't hot it. I acted like I didn't really know who he was and just spoke to him like any other customer even breaking conversation with him at several points to answer questions for other folks as opposed to giving him my full undivided attention. After about 5 minutes of that he totally relaxed and his entire demeanor changed. He went from being somewhat rude and cold to being very chill. Calling me bro etc. And I ended up walking around the store with him for like 25-30 minutes helping him shop. The only time I implied I knew who he was was towards the end as I was ringing him up. He asked me to recommend some climbing spots close to town like the Flatirons. It was a beautiful Saturday and I said to him that those places are great but he'll get bombarded by people if he goes there and I recommended some spots just outside of town instead. He sorta leaned in and thanked me for my discretion and that was it. It seemed like he really just wanted to be treated like a normal guy. I don't know if these count. But, I was tending bar at a restaurant in Milwaukee which was a short distance from one of the concert halls. It was a popular spot for the visiting celebs and musicians because it was small, quiet, and tucked away, and served delicious food. Also, there was a strict rule that no one would call attention to, or make special arrangements for, anyone due to their fame or status. Every customer was treated the same and their privacy respected. Well, one night Jerry Seinfeld was in town, and he and his entourage stopped in. His manager handler security guard stepped up and tried to get a table. We were absolutely packed full and just couldn't accommodate anyone, let alone several. When we explained that the rare beer wait, we were met with an annoyed and condescending do you know who this is? Make room. Me. You are paying customers. Just like everyone else in this room. Which you can see is full. We appreciate your patience and understanding. We'd be happy to get you some cocktails while you wait. After some hushed and curt words, they left. Another time. The late, great Mitch Hedberg came in for a drink and was seated at the bar by himself. He was writing in a notebook, new material, I'd imagine, and just enjoying the quiet. A few young guys seated down the bar recognized him, and began approaching him, asking for autographs and pictures. It was clear Mitch wasn't in the mood. 
so I explained to the guys that he was not who they thought, and was in fact a regular customer who lives across the street, suspecting my bullet. They continued their harping. So I began talking to Mitch like he was the guy who lived across the street. Mitch actually played along and eventually the young guys left. He left a nice tip. I met a celebrity but I didn't realize who he was. I posted before in a thread buried in 10k comments. Doubt anyone saw it. Years ago. Like 20 years ago. I went to see Adam Sandler stand up at a small comedy club. Clearly I knew who he was because I got tickets to his show. My date and I were running a smidge late and ran into a guy in the lobby. A guy I used to work with. So I was like. Hey. Danny. How are you doing? What have you been up to? He was like, I'm good, how are you? I responded that I was good, but running late for the show. Had to run and he said, okay, have a good night and walked off. As my date and I walked into the club, he said, you know who that was? It wasn't Danny, it was Adam Sandler. But, go to say, he played the part of Danny well, one of his better roles. I met Simon Pegg when I was working as a cashier at Borders. It was like a Tuesday in the afternoon and the place was empty. He came up to my with some stationery and I started ringing him up. The entire time I was thinking he looked so much like him. But I didn't think it was him since I wasn't in the UK and as far as I knew he wasn't filming a movie in Chicago. So it was a pretty quiet transaction. After it was done and I was handing him his bag with his stuff I jokingly said. Has anyone told you that you look like the guy from Shaun of the Dead? He replied. I'm the guy from Shaun of the Dead. I worked at a movie theater in Albuquerque at the time they were filming the first Avengers film. Captain America was about to come out. I remember because we had the huge standee of him in the lobby. I was reading in the box office when three people came up. Guy asked for three tickets to bridesmaids. It was dark out and he had a green baseball cap and sunglasses. He paid with a credit card. Christopher Evans. I stared at the card after I swiped it, handed it back, I need you to sign the receipt he did, and then he walked in, edit, thanks for all the comments guys, just to add on, I didn't recognize the other two with him, one was a blonde woman and the other was a guy with buzzed hair and a 6 o'clock shadow, also I only lived in ABQ for a year in 2010 to 2011. Working cashier at a tiny candy store during a lull. And suddenly we're swarmed with black suits and shades. Some guys in suits come in with more shades shadowing them. They browse, buy chocolates, and hand them to another suit. I joke to one guy about that box definitely not being big enough for everyone. And he laughs and buys three more. They pack up and shades escort them out. Couldn't have been more than 10 minutes. When I went home, I found out that Air Force 2 had landed for a conference nearby. And I had managed to convince the secretary of something, defense, I believe, to buy $200 of chocolate. Wolf Blitzer was a monumental douche in 2004. I was working in Atlanta and staying at the Omni Hotel, which also hosts CNN HQ. Drinking in the hotel bar one night after an exhausting day of work. Just wanted a drink and some socializing, but not too much. So I sit next to this dude and get a drink. Keep in mind. We're sitting close together at a bar, so I never really turn to look at him. Small talk ensues and he talks about his work and how his travel schedule is killing him. We commiserated as I traveled a lot back then. I could tell he was baiting me to ask him more and more questions but I just wasn't into it. Finally he infers implies that he was on TV so I bit. Oh yeah? Have I seen you on anything in particular? Incensed. He responds. Yes. I'm Wolf Duck I'm Blitzer. Sorry dude. I paid my tab and left. One of my best friend's doppelganger is Ethan Hawke. Like it's scary how much he resembles him. To the point that during those stupid Facebook challenges he just changed his profile picture to him and nobody realized it. Also his favorite story was one time at San Diego Comic Con he actually confused Rosario Dawson at a hotel bar. Anyway one night I'm walking home from work in Nick. And I see who I thought was my friend. John just walking on a kind of secluded part of of 9th Ave around Hell's Kitchen. And I yell John. He doesn't turn around. So I decide to yell it again. And instead of responding his pace quickens. 
I decide the best thing to do is to run at him which seemed to terrify him as keep in mind it's late and there are very few people around. Anyway I catch up to him and say oh, you're not John and then walk away from what was a very frightened Ethan Hawke. I had the fortune of being on the same plane as Stanley. We were being shuttled to another part of the airport. I whispered to what I assumed to be his bodyguard that I didn't want to lead others on who he was so please just let him know that I appreciate his work. He nodded then whispered into Stanley's ear. He then smiled and put his head down in acknowledgement. Rest in peace big guy. You were a big part of my childhood. Edit. Thank you for all the upvotes. Proof. I forgot I hadn't pick I snuck of him that night. This doesn't count because it's about my father-in-law. And he legitimately didn't know who she was. But we were vacationing in Maine and spending a lot of time on the beach. My father-in-law would walk his dog early every one morning. He met this lady and they would meet up and walk their dogs together then go their separate ways. One morning I got up early to come with him. And to my surprise, we met up with Sigourney Weaver and went for a walk. I was on my way to a Rams game. Back when they played in street. Louis. I was headed for the Metrolink station. In the middle of a crowd of people who were all wearing Rams gear. And clearly going the same place I was. The station is right smack by Barnes Jewish Hospital. And we're walking by buildings that are part of the hospital complex or WashU's medical campus. As I'm walking towards the stoop of a brownstone. I see someone step out. And react in surprise. I immediately recognize him as one of the team's defensive tackles. Who was on IR at the time with a foot injury. He looked surprised to see the crowd. Then worried. Which I took to mean he was concerned he might get caught up by fans wanting to get autographs or take a photo. Nobody recognized him. They just kept walking by. I was going right by the steps where he was standing. So I stepped to the side and said. Hey man. If you go back in and take a right. You'll be able to go out the north door. And there'll be less people there. He nodded. Said thanks. And headed back inside. 40 minutes later. And there he is on the sidelines. Right in front of me.